Hey, local leaders. Thanks for joining on today. This session is on one of our follow-up campaigns, specifically the thank you campaign. Uh, this is a really good session to join onto for a quick, effective follow-up strategy that you can implement with anyone whether you've interviewed them, whether it's someone that you've worked with in the past, whether it's someone that you've provided referrals to or got referrals from, uh, really anyone, okay? So this advanced follow-up strategy is really built off expressing gratitude and appreciation of others. Now this is gonna provide you with uh, really the opportunity to engage your database and provide the context for a future conversation. So the premise of our campaign today is to thank the people that you meet. Okay, so really thank the people you've engaged with and have built a relationship with, nurtured a relationship with, or just gotten to know. You wanna thank the people that you interview. That's a really easy one and a good way to connect with them again in the future. You also wanna thank business owners who participate on the website. Ones that are adding on deals, coupons, gift cards, sales, specials. Thank them for doing that. Thank them for claiming their pages. Thank them for uh, fostering that culture of shopping local in their community. You also want to show appreciation and gratitude to interviewees, friends, fans, and followers. Okay, so that's a really good thing to do. You can do this on social media. You can do this uh, in person, over the phone, email, but it's typically best for quick, instant messaging. So text and social media um, direct message is perfect for this. Um, you could even do email, like I said before, although the open rates aren't really what they used to be. Uh, you might even want to go with handwritten notes. That's a really nice way to follow up with someone. So for this session, what we're gonna focus on, like I said, is this thank you campaign. Now these are a lot shorter in terms of coaching sessions. And for this one, which I'm gonna re be recording today, uh, I'm gonna stop the recording partway through so that way we can kind of focus on tackling questions and really implementing this. So we'll have about 10 to 15 minutes of this actual recording, but for those that are on live, we'll be doing a little bit of work together after this. So let's get into it. So who to follow up with? You gotta follow up with, like I said, the people you've interviewed. A really easy way to have a conversation with them again. And that's, that's one of the biggest challenges or biggest complications when it comes to follow-up. I don't know what to say. So this gives you something to say, and it also gives you the timing to say it, which can be after you've done this interview. So it could be a month, it could be two months, it could be a little bit longer. You could do this every six months if you really wanted to. So follow up with the people you've interviewed. Follow up with businesses who put on deals, sales, and specials onto the site. Okay, that's a really worthwhile thing to do because it encourages them to update those deals and put on more or even start to learn about the success stories that they've had. If they've had made a lot of money from adding on these deals onto your site, it's a good conversation to have with that person. You also want to follow up with people who have liked, commented and shared on the interviews you've done or any social media posts that you've highlighted. This is something that I think a lot of people forget about. There are two words in social media. Everyone focuses on the me, dear component. They don't really focus on the social element and talking to others. Too often it's, hey, look what I did. And then everyone comments and likes and things like that. And it just ends there. But what I'm gonna want you to be doing is actually looking through the people who have commented, looking through the people who have liked your content, looking at the people uh, who have shared your content. That's a really good one. And following up with them. Because if you think about how people engage on social media, likes are very cheap. People do them all the time. Comments are a little bit harder to get. That's, that's good engagement. But sharing the content, that's someone's stamp of approval. So if you have people that share your content, boom, you want to reach out to them and thank them because that is an easy thing to talk about. Then if you have people that comment things, that's probably the next category you want to reach out to. Shares are probably the the, the ideal, comments are the next best thing. And then likes are what you'd move on to next. Obviously, there's usually a lot more uh, likes than the other two. Usually it's likes are the most popular, um, then comments and then shares are probably the least popular thing to happen. But that's for the flipped order of what you wanna be tackling. So following up with people who have liked, commented and shared your interviews or social media posts. 
You can also do this thank you campaign with people that you've worked with in the past uh, that you've helped buy or sell a home with. Okay, so your past clients. Even if you haven't worked with them in some time, it could be a year or two. It's nice to be thanked. People love to hear that others are thinking of them. So you can reach out to them and say, hey, thanks so much uh, for you know, working again. I just wanted to reach out to you and, and just express my appreciation. Uh, I know we worked together some time ago, but uh, I always like to keep in touch with people that I have worked with just to see if there's anything else that I can help them with. Simple as that. You could do this with friends or family members, of course. And you could also do this with people who have referred you business. Usually you have a strong relationship with these types, but for the ones that you haven't got the strongest relationships with, this is probably even more important. Then also think about the people that you refer business to. Thank them for taking care of your clientele. You could even do this for people that have given you amazing, uh, amazing service. Okay, if you've got uh, people that you work with who just do a great job for you, thanking them, they always appreciate it. So what should you say? Well, in your text message, in your direct message, in whatever quick medium you're going to be using, an example script could be, hey, or hey name, uh, I just wanted to say thank you for participating in this local initiative, being interviewed, and helping others get to know you. Okay, that would be if someone has been interviewed, or you could be saying to someone um, that you know, has been interviewed, or even has just put their profile on the site, you could say, hey, I just want to say thanks for taking the time to help everyone in our community get to know you and your business. So, hey, I just wanted to say thanks for you taking, or for taking the time um, to help everyone in our community get to know you and your business. Now, if the business has engaged on the site, they have added on deals, coupon sales, and specials, or one of the above at least, you could reach out to them and say, hey, I wanted to say thanks for offering amazing incentives for local consumers to try you out. And if they've added on like a review coupon, one which people have to leave a review before they can get a reward, you could say, hey, uh, I also wanted to say thanks for adding on rewards for your customers to write reviews and educate others about your business. So putting that together so it sounds a little bit better, hey, Steve, I just wanted to say thanks uh, for offering amazing incentives for local consumers to try you out, as well as rewards for, cons um, for customers to write reviews and educate others about your business. Okay, so none of these scripts are very complex. They're very straightforward. But what happens when they respond? Because the natural way that people uh, converse, that human beings converse, is that when someone says thank you, you respond with, you're welcome. That's how we were raised, okay? Well, you hope that's how we were raised. And so after they respond, because that's the primary goal that you're wanting to achieve with follow-up, getting a response. After they respond, what do we talk about next? Now, you could obviously just leave it at that, but that's probably not really getting the relationship any stronger. What you want to be doing is responding by actually engaging with maybe things that they need and you can ask them, hey, do you, do you, um, you know, want to be interviewed if they haven't been interviewed yet? Or do you want the newsletter if they haven't been subscribed to the newsletter? Or it could be that you go for value and service. What in the world can I do for you? Are you doing okay? How are you doing right now with everything that's going on? These are normal conversational pieces, and they usually foster engagement a little bit further. Okay, so, hey, do you want to be interviewed? Do you want the newsletter? What in the world can I do for you? Are you doing okay? And how are you doing right now with everything that's going on? But you might even change this. You might even not go for the, the thank you campaign. You might be doing the are you okay campaign or how you're doing campaign. And you can say to them, hey, you know, because this is someone you haven't interviewed before. Maybe it's someone in your database. Hey, Steve, uh, Matt here. I just wanted to reach out to see if you're doing okay. I know there's a lot going on right now. So if there's anything that I can do for you, please do let me know. Or it could be, hey, uh, Steve, this is Matthew KUT, and I figured I'd reach out to ask how you're doing. I know things are a little bit crazy right now. It's been a while since we last talked. Uh, I found that business is actually really busy, uh, but I wanted to ask how you're doing, and if you need anything, be sure to let me know. Okay, so that was a little bit longer. But you get the point, it's offering up service. How can I help you? How can I service you? Is there anyone I can connect you with? I'm always networking, even right now. So using this as your tool. Now the goal with your follow-up 
whenever you're doing this is to get a response and to turn that response into a conversation about how you can service them, how you can provide more value and or how you can help them in real estate or whatever your role is. But the strange thing about this is that although I think it's like 87% of people would use their same real estate professional uh, if given the option, but only 50% of them do because the majority of real estate agents don't follow up. You've got to think about where you want your business to be and how you want to be targeting following up for yourself. Now, top performers in real estate will typically follow up between four to 12 times a year per person. So if I'm following up with you and you're in my database, it'll probably be once per quarter or even as often as once a month or somewhere in between. Now, if you have a giant database of say, 2000 people, I can totally imagine how those numbers might be a little bit lower, it might be one to two times. But if your database is sort of 300 people, that's an achievable number okay, for you to follow up with. So I've got a strategy that will allow you to kind of map out this follow up. Because what happens with follow up there is that it's easy to lose sight of. Because it's something that we know we can get rewarded from. But Oftentimes, we haven't got instant results in the past, so we kind of give up. It's the same reason why people stop learning languages, stop working out, stop eating well. And so one thing that can really assist you here is having a process, having a map. And so the strategy would be to, number one, figure out the number of people in your database that you're wanting to follow up with. That's the first thing you want to do. And then the second thing is you have to have a target how many times you're wanting to follow up per person. Now your goal may be a very lofty goal of 12 times per person, but if you've not followed up with anyone over the last two years, maybe not really the most realistic goal. It's difficult to suddenly have 12 follow-ups per person in your database, just add it into your calendar. So what I would recommend is maybe aiming around that four to five mark is a good one. Because four times is once per quarter. So once every three months following up with people makes sense for a lot of uh, the sponsors that I work with. Okay, now I'm actually gonna bring this up on the screen here for you as well. Uh, so that way you guys can see this map as well as the maths that's involved in it. Cool. So identify the number of people in your database, identify the number of times you wanna follow up with each person in your database on average across the full year. You may exceed this number and that's great. So once you have those two numbers, the next thing to figure out is how many weeks you actually work in a year. Now the default is, oh, I work 52 weeks a year. Nope, <laughs> you gotta minus off sickness, you gotta minus off time with family, you gotta minus off vacations, and we can never travel again, you gotta minus off that as well. And that'll be the actual number of weeks you work. Now I had actually had a conversation with a client uh, on, these, on one of these sessions a little while ago, and I said, how many weeks do you work? And she's like, I work full time every week. And I was like, yeah, but if you remove travel, sickness and things like that, and I, I kind of kept probing and she realized that she only actually worked for about 36 weeks of a year. That's a big jump down from 52. And if your goals are to achieve something over a span of 52 weeks, but you only have 36 weeks, 32 weeks, 38 weeks of the year to actually do it, you're going to fail because the math doesn't actually add up. I'm oh, sorry, add up, sorry. So calculate the number of real work weeks that you actually work in a year. And then the final piece is to select the number of days per week that you're actually going to follow up. Again, it's easy to say seven days a week, but realistically, will you do that? Most people will uh, follow up realistically between one to three days a week. That'll be what they set. Top performers will actually do this every day and they'll divide their day into three categories. They'll have time for prospecting for new business, time for working with clients, and then time for following up with their database. So if you're maybe towards that uh, top producer angle, you can maybe go for a higher number, five times, four times plus um, per week. But if you're just sort of starting to build up your follow-up strategy, I would recommend setting a, a good goal of one to three times a week. Okay, one to three days a week. And then once you have these numbers, okay, the number of people in your database, the number of follow-ups you want to do, the number of weeks you work, and the number of days in a week, 
that you'll actually follow up, there is an equation that you follow. So you take your database size and you multiply that by the number of reach outs per person you wanted to do. So say your database size uh, was 400 and you wanted to do five reach outs per person. Well, you're looking at about 2000 follow-ups over the course of a year. That's a big, big number. But then we're gonna take that big number and we're gonna divide it by the number of weeks that you actually work, okay? So say you have 2000 follow-ups and you do real estate part-time. You only realistically work 20 weeks in a year. Well, that's gonna give you a number, 100 follow-ups per week, okay? To, to work that database, 100 follow-ups per week. But that's still quite a large number. We need to divide that by the number of, of days that we're actually going to do these follow-ups, okay? So 100 follow-ups per week, but if we actually work five days a week or we would, could do this over five days a week, even though we're doing it part-time, we're just doing half days or something like that, that's gonna bring that number down. It's gonna bring it down to about 20. So we went from 2,000 down to 20. And that's an achievable, actionable goal when you think about your day-to-day -day operations. So you've got to find out this number and what makes sense for you. I've got an example down there, 400 follow-ups, uh, five, oh, sorry, 400 people, five follow-ups per person. This person works 48 weeks in a given year and they're going to do this five uh, days a week. That's 8.3 reach outs per day to people in their database to achieve that goal. And these are simple messages on Facebook. These are text messages. These are handwritten notes that you post off. You might do them in a big bunch or batches. So think about how you can use this as a way to stack your follow-up strategies. Now, one of them or all of them could be a thank you campaign or how you doing or are you, are you okay campaign. But also think about all the other things you do, the other marketing that you utilize. So the, the automated emails that you may send out, are they subscribed to your Parkbench newsletter? Maybe does that kind of count into the equation or are they just additional little touches? But having an actual built out strategy is a vital component for your business plan. And it's where a lot of agents miss out on referrals, as well as clients themselves, uh, because they're not following up. 87% of people that were surveyed, I think it was by Zillow, said they'd work with the same agent that they worked with last year. Only 50% of them do. That's because of a lot of factors, but one of the main ones is that people don't follow up. The other thing you gotta consider as well is that people's needs are changing all the time. We can't just assume that because of COVID, people aren't going to want to buy or sell because <laughs> based off the conversations I've, I've had with a lot of agents, they actually want to move a little bit more often or they're a lot busier now. Um, the agents themselves are a lot busier now since COVID's kicked off because people are thinking about, oh, we want to do this. We've got to do this now. We're going to get things locked in. Can't wait too long because who knows what could happen in the future. So take advantage of really the time right now that you have if you're working a lot, a lot of time from home and send out messages in quick ways to make sure that you're getting your follow-up done, really actioning this. Now, what I'm gonna do in a moment is I'm going to stop the recording for those that will end up watching this later on YouTube and for the attendees that are on the session, we're gonna have more of an open discussion. Where we'll have the microphones off and we'll actually start doing this on the session. That's what GTD stands for, getting things done. Um, so for those that are watching this in the future, apply it, utilize this um, information, it's really worthwhile. And for those that are on the session, stay tuned because we're gonna get into it now. Awesome, thanks guys.